Hello and welcome back everyone to my basement home theater. In this video we are going to go over the results from the Room EQ Wizard for all six subwoofers in my theater. In case you missed my last video, I upgraded the bass in my home theater by installing four Stereo Integrity 18 inch subwoofers in an infinite baffle setup. These 18s are located behind my acoustically transparent screen in a cavity which is where the original two SVS PB1000 Pro subwoofers used to reside. The SVS subs were moved to the back of the room behind my row of seating by using the SVS wireless adapters, since I didn't have RCA cables ran to these locations. To get the SVS wireless transmitters closer to the receivers, which are located on the PB1000s themselves, and since I already had the nice SVS SoundPath RCA cables ran into the sub cavity, I simply hooked up the transmitters to the RCA cables and installed them both right behind the screen material at opposite ends of the cavity to help prevent interference from each other. This at least put the transmitters in the same room as the subs instead of being located behind the wall where the AV rack is. I did have to use an adapter to get this method to work as the SVS transmitters require a 3.5 millimeter input jack so I had to find an RCA to 3.5 millimeter adapter, but so far I've had no issues running it this way. Here's a quick visual of where the SVS subs are now located, which is approximately at the quarter wall location along the rear wall, or just behind the second outside most seat on both ends of the seating row. Both subs are 27 inches from the corner of this rear wall. Since my research told me not to mix ported subs with sealed subs, which probably represent the closest to the 18s in the infinite baffle setup, I called SVS to have them send me their free port plugs, which essentially turns these SVS ported subs into sealed ones. After installing the foam plugs, you simply go into the SVS digital app and under port tuning, change the option to sealed mode. And that's it. Okay, let's get into the fun stuff. Jump into REW and take a look at the results of everything. I did do a video, kind of a walkthrough of how I initially went through this program to get the two SVS subs when they were still in that front cavity, playing nicely together and even out the base across all of my seating positions. So if you wanna go through that one, feel free to check that out. The only other thing I wanna to touch on that I did differently from that previous video was gain matching. I mentioned in the previous walkthrough of this that I really didn't gain match because the two SVS subs are completely identical. So as long as the gain or volume is set the same, they were gain match. Now that I have different manufacturers, different sizes, everything about them is different, I was definitely gonna gain match. And I even set up the microphone right by the cone, three inches away, um, from the 18s and then did the same process over on the SVS subs and then continued with the whole process and to be completely honest with you I didn't like the results of how that sounded for whatever reason it just didn't work for me I went back and level matched them at my main listening position before I started with my measurement process set them all to 75 decibels at the U mic in my main listening position, then started my measurements, and the end result, again, for me, was a lot better. I just feel like it sounded better, I had a lot better results, and it was pretty obvious results. So maybe I did something wrong in the gain matching process, I'm not sure. This is level match at the main listening position to 75 dBs, and then I started my measurements from there. Just wanted to let you know that little tidbit before I start. So we're gonna open up. This is before and after. So here are all the measurements that I did before. We'll clear these out. 
what I ended up doing is playing around with my sub, the rear subs, the SVS subs. When I first moved them to the rear wall, they were all the way in the corner, like pretty much tucked into the corner as far as they could go, facing each other or facing the main listening position. When I did that, this is the results. This was the left rear with the sub in the corner, right rear with the sub in the corner. Then I started moving them around a little bit to see what would happen. I wanted to keep them behind the row of seats, if at all possible, to keep them out of the way and not have to bring them out front. And moving them the 27 inches in, or roughly a quarter of the wall in, this was the difference, and it was pretty substantial. Just that little bit of a move, I kind of found the best spot. So left rear sub all the way in the corner, and then left rear sub at half wall. Noticeable difference. No nasty null right here. You know, fairly smooth response across. That little change took care of a lot of issues just by doing that. So sub placement is huge. Right rear sub in the corner, right rear sub at the quarter wall. So again, definitely helped out right in this same 100 hertz area. Then I did both rear subs in the corner before I moved them, both rear subs at a quarter. Once again, much better, much better results. You know, to start with this, start with that. So starting with both rear subs at the quarter wall, I then wanted to just take some base measurements of the 18s that are in the front, and they're in pairs. I have a right front pair and a left front pair because there's two subwoofers per channel on the amp. So this was before anything, the right front pair of 18s in the infinite baffle, the left pair of 18s in the front. And then all the front ones playing together, all four of them, is the purple. So then I started time aligning the front ones together. So I have a couple measurements here, you know, 10, 11, 12. And over here, here's 10. No notes there, 11. Okay. So 11, I made a note in here that this was the time align winner for the front subs only. Right now we're seeing all front subs before any time delay. 10, I delayed the right pair too, which helped over here in, in this section, but it made this a little worse. 11 was the winner that I ended up going with. It wasn't as much of a, a dip down here compared to that one and we still had some, some better positive outcome over here. The only other one I tried was kind of in the middle of those two at a 1.5, which again was just worsening this null here a little bit better over here. So I kind of went right in the middle here with this one delay. So that was our winner for time aligning the front two together. And, and again, those subs are in the same space. They're very close to each other. There's not gonna be a huge delay needed to get those working together properly. So got the front ones time aligned together. Next measurement I took is all six of them playing together at the same time. And at this point, only the fronts have been time aligned. And just to show you a comparison, here's our front subs together by themselves. So number nine, the red there is just the fronts by themselves. And if we have both subs at the rear wall. That's number six. So green. Front subs highlighted right there in red. The green highlighted now is rear, but you put them all together and it's worse. I mean, we have a little bit more output through this range up here, but then it just drops and our output is not good down here, and that's a time alignment issue. What we did was we took all of our six subs. I kind of had an idea from watching some other videos, and as you can see, the, the next step is all six subs, rears inverted. So in the mini DSP, you can invert is one of the options per output, and I simply at this point inverted both of the rear subs, and we got this, which is beautiful. It got rid of almost everything. All this, this peak over here, this null, all this null. I mean, we just had a pretty decent response flat all the way across just by inverting 
the rear two subs. Made a couple notes in the inversion process. I was just playing around with it. This is the one we're looking at, number 14. 15, no notes there. 16, 17, time align winner for all six together. So what I was doing was basically time aligning the rear subs to the front. The winner was number 17 here. So inverting them both with a 0.75 delay on both of the rear. And you can see what happened here. So with a one delay of both the rears, a little bit of positive here, a little bit of negative. I changed the one to a half with the blue. So naturally it's kind of right in the middle. And then our winner or the one that I chose is this red one. So we'll get rid of a couple of these to see. This one was just with them inverted, the highlighted one. With a little bit of delay, I added some output right through this range, which I liked. We got from 35 to 55. We got some positive there. Lost a little bit throughout this range, but not much. Probably wouldn't have made a difference with either one, but I chose this one as my winner for time align. So now we're gonna take this graph here. You'll notice, I guess I didn't have any time alignment of just the rears, and that is honestly, they didn't need any. They are so identical in placement to the main listening position. I went through the process and tried to add delays to the right rear and to the left rear, and it didn't matter. They were the best with no delay. They were already time aligned just due to their positioning to the main listening position. The rears didn't have any type of delay on them to get them time aligned together as a pair of rear subs. A little bit of time on the front pair, and then together, just inverting them, and a little bit of delay on both rears to the fronts. So that's where we're at with that. So I'm gonna remove all these graphs. And the next thing we did was EQ and add our house curve to clear all these. So again, this is the same one that we just left off with the other graph. I took a fresh measurement, all six subs, timelined, rears are inverted with a 0.75 delay on both of the rear sub. And then what you'll see is I made some notes on some of these. So two, so we take this, this one here that you see, and number two is all six subs, timelined and EQ. So we simply pulled this measurement into our EQ. We went through this whole process here and our EW added our EQ and we ended up with this green line. So this was time aligned. This is our EQ house curve line from EQ from room EQ was we started, you know, down here 90 decibels and at 100 we're at 80. So there's our 10 decibel slope from 100 to 30. So we're good. So then what I ended up doing is adding some manual EQ on our input one, that way it applies the EQ across all four outputs. And so number three, this was what I started with. So at 20 hertz, right here, um, it was a five decibel boost with a 12 for how wide the curve is, you know, whether it's a narrow boost or a wide. And so number three, if we add that one in, you'll see, get this out of the way, that we boosted this original EQ line from 84 up to 90. If I get rid of that one, you can already tell the improvement gets rid of that null down there at 20 hertz. So that was a manual filter that I added in the mini DSP. And then our next one, four, so I left that one at 25 and 12. And then I started messing around with 22 hertz, you know, just a little bit higher. I think I was trying to pull this, this peak down a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's right at 22 hertz. So a negative one with a 15, they didn't do a whole lot. Number five, I changed it to a two, a negative two decibel decrease. So that helped a little bit. It, it definitely brought that peak down, left everything else pretty much the same. So then six is, I went to 24. I got rid of the 22, trying to drop that one. But instead, I went to 24, which is right here, and I was just trying to boost that up instead of cut this down. So the change to 6 is 24, boosting it to 
So that is this one. So let me get rid of this. So it took our curve here at 24 and boosted it up to the green line. Instead of trying to cut this peak down, I'm boosting this null up. And I kind of liked how that looked a little bit better. So that's where we're at now. Number seven, I left that one alone and I jumped over to 27. There's 27, so we got a little bit of a, a null there. Added two, and it gave me that. The red line, still looking pretty decent. And number eight, I, you can see here in my note that this was the winner. So on number seven, I boosted 27 hertz two. On eight, I changed it to a one. So went from this to this. Not a whole lot of difference, but didn't quite jump up so much. When you look at this one here, it just looked a little bit more smooth to me than this red one. It's kind of staying up high throughout and then dropping. I liked, liked number eight better. This is the one that I finally went with. So this is my house curve, all said and done, main listening position. Technically, the Mini DSP has seen four subwoofers since there's a pair of subwoofers per channel on the front. But with all six subwoofers playing, this is where I ended up with my house curve. The last measurements that I have to share with you is just what it looked like across all my positions. All six subs, this is the one we just saw. We have the two rear subs at the main listening position and just the front subs at the main listening position. So turning them off individually with the Mini DSP those were the results front to rear at the main listening position but you combine them and that's what you get moving over to the right love seat right listening position the rear subs at the right front subs at the right both of them together and then we have left listening position all subs there we go all subs there just the rears, just the fronts. Left listening position, all subs. Right listening position, all subs. Main listening position, all subs. Not too bad across the seats. It sounds really good. The, the bass output is awesome. I've sat in all seats through different demos. I'm very happy with my results. The only thing that I did further past this is uh, adjust some of my crossovers. I'm gonna do a separate video on that, walk you through that whole process that I followed to get to the different crossovers because Odyssey set them way different than where I ended up. So keep your eye out for that video. I'll try and get to that one next sounding really good at this point so i'm very happy where things are at i have really good output across all my seats and with those 18s in there it is just fantastic very impressive and a huge upgrade that's where we're at if you have any questions feel free to comment below please like this video consider subscribing if you haven't already i appreciate everyone watching and taking the time to follow this whole process it's been quite a journey so stay tuned for the next one and we'll see you then thanks